Hello everyone. This video is meant to explain the Marshall learner condition. And I realize that some students uh, find it a bit uh, tricky, a bit challenging. Uh, and in this video, I will try to explain it as clearly as possible. Okay. Uh, so the first thing to uh, understand about the MLC is that it is about the relationship between a change in the exchange rate and the resulting change in the country's trade balance. Okay. So the change in exchange rate is the cause and the change in the trade, trade balance is the consequence. Okay, so of course, a change in the exchange rate could be uh, an appreciation or depreciation of the currency, and the, the reasoning is, is exactly the same. But to uh, simplify in this video, I will only consider the case of a depreciation. And in the case of a depreciation, a lower exchange rate, uh, it seems intuitive that, oh, wait, if, if my currency is uh, weaker, then my exports have become relatively cheaper, more competitive, and my imports have become relatively more expensive, less competitive, and so we should export more, import less, and therefore the trade balance will improve. Uh, and actually it's true that uh, you will export more, you will import less, uh, as, as long as the law of demand is satisfied. But the trick here is that the trade balance is not about the quantity, uh, of your exports and your imports, it is about the value of your imports and exports. If we write uh, the equation of the trade balance, it is the value, or let's just call it export revenue, how much you receive from your exports, minus how much you spend on imports. We can call that import expenditure. Okay, and we can rewrite it. So how much I receive from exports is essentially uh, the, the average price of my um, exports uh, times the quantity of uh, the goods I export and the import expenditure, same thing, the average price of an import times the quantity of goods and service that we import. Okay, all right. And of course, when we, uh, when the exchange rate decreases, we need to analyze the change, the resulting changes in the trade balance. Is this going to improve or to deteriorate? So to simplify, we are gonna make the following assumption. Make three assumptions. So one will assume that uh, the exchange rate has uh, decreased by let's say 5%. It doesn't matter, it could be anything. Okay, so my currency has become weaker. That's a depreciation. And we will make two assumptions regarding the price elasticity of the demand for exports and imports. Okay, so let's assume that uh, the price elasticity of the demand for my exports is just equal to X, it's just uh, shorter. And the price elasticity of the demand uh, for my for my imports is equal to m. So basically, you see that here I assume constant price elasticity. Uh, it's just make things easier. Okay, it's it's a special case, but it just make things easier. All right. So now we are ready. The exchange rate has decreased by five percent. We have uh, values for the PEDs. So let's see what happens to my trade balance. And we're going to do that uh, step by step. So first, let's uh, focus on uh, let's just make it on export revenue. What will happen to my export revenue? Okay. So remember, it's PX time QX. The first thing to understand is that PX is not going to change. PX, I repeat, is not going to change. Why? Because even though the depreciation of my currency has made my products uh, cheaper, they, it has made my products cheaper for foreigners, which means that now when they buy products, let's say shoes from me, they have to use less of their own currency. Okay, so yes, the 5% depreciation essentially means that they have to pay 5% less of their own currency to buy 
uh, one pair of shoes from my country. But from my perspective, every time I sell one pair of shoes to them, I still receive the same amount in my own currency. Okay, so the price I receive every time I, I, I export a pair of shoes does not change. However, because my shoes become cheaper for foreigners, 5% cheaper, and assuming that the law of demand is satisfied, they are going to buy more, okay? If the price for them, or I insist, okay, the price for them from, from their perspective falls by 5%, and if the price elasticity of demand for export is equal to X, then of course, the quantity of shoes that I export will increase by 5% times X, okay, times, okay, maybe let's just 5X percent, 5X percent. Okay, so for example, if X uh, is equal to one, so this would be a, a unitary uh, price uh, elasticity. In that case, uh, the, the, when the price decreases by 5%, the quantity uh, of shoes that I export increases by 5%. Okay. So overall, the price of uh, my export from my perspective does not change. I, but on the other hand, I will export 5% more shoes. So overall, my export revenue, my export revenue increases by 5x%. Okay. All right. And that's actually always the case. As soon as your uh, currency depreciates, your export revenue will always increase unless extreme case, unless the price elasticity of demand for your export is equal to zero. In that case, yes, it will remain constant, but actually it can't decrease uh, unless perhaps you have a different good, but then this is a, a very uh, weird cases. Okay. So yes, export revenue should always rise, but this is not gonna be the case for import expenditure. Things are a bit more tricky for import expenditure. Let's try to understand why. Okay. So now that my currency has depreciated by 5%, so remember it's PM times QM. So now that my currency has depreciated by 5%, every time I buy a product from abroad, every time I, I import something, then it's more expensive for me. I have to pay 5% more of my own currency. Okay, so it's as if the price of my imports has increased by 5%. Yes, imports are more expensive now because my currency is weaker. So if, um, if the price of my imports has increased by 5%, and if the price elasticity uh, of the demand for my imports is equal to M, then it's easy to uh, conclude that the quantity demanded, of course, will fall because imports are more expensive. Uh, so falls, increase, or say will fall. I don't know why I used the past tense, increase, increase by 5%. Okay. Quantity so increases, falls by five times M percent. Of course, okay. Same thing, take an example. If M is equal to one, unitary price elasticity, when the price of your imports rise by, rises by 5%, you will, the quantity demanded of imports will fall by uh, 5M, which is 5%, okay. So now, uh, the price of um, my imports has increased by 5%, by 5%, yes. And uh, the quantity uh, falls by 5M%. So overall, what happens to my import expenditure? And the approximation that we can make, and it's actually true for very small changes in the exchange rate. This is not going to be true for large changes in the exchange rate, but for this video, I want to keep things as easy uh, as, as possible. We can uh, show, make the following approximation that my uh, import expenditure will change. I don't know if it's going to increase or decrease by, so the amount by which it has increased, okay, 5% five, 5 the increase in price, 
minus the, uh, the, the change in, in quantity, because this is something that is going to take my import expenditure uh, uh, down, I repeat, the, in the, the, the increase in price of imports takes my uh, import expenditure up, the fall in quantity demanded of imports takes my uh, import expenditure down. So overall, the change is going to be equal to 5% minus 5M%, which is essentially 5, 1 minus M percent. Okay, so this is the change. It's an approximation of the change in my import expenditure. Okay, so now let's summarize. Summary and conclusion. Summary and conclusion. So my export revenue rises by 5x percent. Okay, that's part one. Part two, my import expenditure changes, or you can say rises, and if it's negative, then it means a fall. Okay, rises by five, sorry, five, one, one minus n percent. So overall, and that's the conclusion, my trade balance will rise by 5x percent uh, minus 5, one minus m percent, okay? And when is it positive? Because I want to know, all right, when will the depreciation of my currency improve my trade balance? Well, it will improve. My trade balance improves. Oops. My trade balance improves. If, well, this uh, percentage change or this percentage increase is positive. Okay, so if 5x, so I can remove the percent sign, of course, minus five at factor one minus M is positive. Uh-huh, and you see where this is going, which is equivalent to, we can drop the, the fives. You see that they are useless, which means it doesn't matter what the, the initial percentage decrease in your exchange rate is. It's equivalent to X minus M, sorry, minus one plus M positive, which is equivalent to X plus M greater than one. And remember X, is the price elasticity of the demand for exports, and M is the price elasticity of the demand for imports. So you see that whenever this condition is met, whenever the sum of the price elasticity of demands is greater than one, then a, 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 a decrease or a depreciation of your uh, exchange rate, and actually doesn't matter what at what rate your currency depreciates will improve the trade balance, okay? And of course, if we considered if this, and if this condition is not met, then in that case, the trade balance will deteriorate, okay? Uh, I should conclude that if, this uh, was just a, a remark to, to, to conclude, a remark. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, if you have the PD of uh, imports that is greater than one, then in that case, you don't even need that condition anymore. Uh, because in that case, uh, it's obvious that your import expenditure will always uh, fall, okay? If this is the case, your export, as I explained earlier, your export revenue will always rise. Your uh, import expenditure will always fall. Well, you can convince yourself that this is the case, but it's quite obvious. And therefore, the trade balance always improve. When the, well, when, when the currency depreciates, okay. Which means you don't even need to look at the price elasticity of the demand for uh, exports. This condition is, of course, if PDM is greater than one, then obviously this condition is always satisfied. It, actually, it's only when PEDM, when it's only when the demand for your imports is price elastic that things become a bit interesting 
And that's only in that case that you need this condition. Uh, why? Because in that case, of course, it doesn't change anything for export uh, revenue. Okay, will always rise again, unless if you have a perfectly priced inelastic demand, then it will not change. But that's an extreme case. But in that case, if the, the, the if the demand for imports is priced inelastic, then in this case, import expenditure will also rise. Uh, so in this case, you see that the change in the trade balance is ambiguous, right? Because if you go back to the formula, uh, okay, so that's your trade uh, balance uh, here. So basically this rises, the export revenue, but this also rises. Ah. So it's difficult to tell if overall the trade balance improves or uh, deteriorates. And that's uh, in that case that you have to look at uh, the, the Marshall learner condition. It is in that case only. And that's why you see this condition tells you this one minus M. It's only interesting if M is smaller than one, right? It's only interesting if you have a price inelastic uh, demand for imports. It is only in that case that you need to use uh, the Marshall learner condition to determine whether your trade balance is going to improve or uh, deteriorate, right? Uh, so in this video, I focused on the case of the depreciation, but you can uh, you you can reverse the, the the reasoning. You can apply the reasoning to the case of um, the appreciation of a currency, uh, and the reasoning is exactly the same. Okay, I'm going to stop here for today. I hope this was clear. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.